I found a treasure at a yard sale for five bucks. And today I'm going to show you every step that you need to do to transform old found things into new. We have a brand new or new to me. Um, we have a brand new garage sale find and we need to know how to get paint to stick to this. This has been on a table. It has a very, I've been oiled or um, used some like uh, the spray, like dusting stuff and all on it. It definitely feels like there's stuff on it. So first thing we have to do is peel back some layers. So I'm going to, I want this to be a stained project and a lot will depend on how well this surface reacts to my steps. So you don't always know how the wood is going to respond. So always have a backup plan for what you're going to do for paint. So um, one of the cleaners that we like here is the ZEP All Purpose. You can also use um, the TSP that you get in the box from the hardware store. Um, that is um, tri-sodium something or phosphate maybe. Um, and that will break down um, other layers. That's what you would use to paint your floors, things like that when you want everything to come up. Um, a degreaser is why we're using the ZEP, a cleaner degreaser, and you could also use vinegar. Okay, so just something to cut through the layers. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is give it a dousing of the ZEP. And then I'm going to use a lint-free paper towel. This is a Scott paper towel. And then I'm going to let that sit there for just a second, and then we are going to wipe it back with the um, lint-free towel. Let's wipe this back. And so if you don't clean the surface, number one, what will happen is your paint will adhere to the dirt that is on your surface and will not adhere to your surface. Get that all cleaned up. You wanna make sure you go around the outer edge as well, which I'll do in a minute. This has got this little carved detail. Routed, I guess, detailed. Oof. Oof. Grubby. Didn't look that dirty when I started. And you'll notice one of the things that I'm noticing right now is it's turning into a little bit of a matte surface. So the shine is being removed. The waxy, waxy layers. Okay. And then, if I want to stain this, I'm going to need to know to work with the lines called the grain of the piece. So I'm going to want to, if I'm sanding, which I'm gonna do next, I have to go with the grain and I have to keep it straight. If I sand in any kind of directional whatever, the stain that I put on it after is going to pick up those directions. So we wanna keep all of our sanding lines with the grain. That did a really good job of knocking back that slickness. So I have a 100 grit sandpaper. I'm rotating my Lazy Susan so that my arm has free movement. We're gonna be using our joint up here on our shoulder to use full movement. If I did it this way, I would hit my side and I'm gonna run into my body parts, right? So by doing it this way, it gives me the full back and forth movement. And then if I go this way, a lot of times I will tend to veer off slightly because I'm rotating instead of using the joint to go. Okay, That's a lot of words for all that, but it's very important to um, paint a straight line, to base in a straight way, and to sand. So it's a good tip. All right, here we go. We're going to sand gently. Okay, and then I'll feel it just to see how it's coming along. Okay, and then I'll slide it over, paying attention to the straightness of your lines. I'm gonna go all the way up onto the edges, which I didn't do there. Back to here. Rotate it around. There 
Okay. Now we'll take our paper towel, and that is a dusty mess. It's nice to get your outdoor trash can going. I'm going to turn that fan off. I don't want to blow that around. Your outdoor trash can, which we have a big one in here because work, and just get that dust straight into a can so it doesn't run around on your table. It's not completely cleaned off yet, but that's because I have more sanding to do. Okay, so I want to pay attention to this outer area, so I'm going to make a tool. We've got this inner space and the outer space, and I need something that will cup or convex into this little area right here so the paint doesn't just fall right off. So I'm going to take a cello sponge. I'm going to wrap that around. We're going to cut that down just a little bit. If you have a spongy sanding block, that would work perfectly, but I don't happen to have one. And now we don't worry about which direction we're sanding in. You can change it and move it to a fresh spot if you feel like you're wearing it down. And then we'll get over to the big side and come around the outside of the piece. Okay, so I've got another Scott towel, and this time instead of spraying down my surface, I'm going to just mist this paper towel just to get the tack of the liquid to remove any of the debris. So see how much debris there was on there. This is a step that you could definitely use vinegar with if you just wanted to do that. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'm gonna feel everything and see, I feel like this still feels a little bit shiny. Um, there's a couple tricks that you can do um, when you have it dry. You can take a brush and put some water on it, and then see if it repels. So you wanna see if that looks like it's pushing back. It looks like it's sitting right where it needs to sit a little bit, no, I think that's okay. Your surface should feel slightly um, slightly roughened, but it shouldn't feel rough, okay? So if it's too rough, maybe you used a 60 grit instead of 100, or if it's too smooth, if I used a 220 grit like this, so look at the difference between the two, if I used the 220, it might not be rough enough. So then what I can do is I can rough it with this one, and then I could go back, if I feel like it's too rough, I could smooth it with this one. And I think I might just go ahead and do that anyway. I don't want to polish it. I want to refine it. I like the feel of that versus that. So always let your fingers do the, uh, the walking um, and let them decide for you. Your fingers will know. Okay, now this is where I'm gonna get out the stain and we're going to see if it's gonna respond well to the stain and if it'll look good. So if it was raw wood, um, we would know that it's gonna take and it'll be fine. But because this is already stained wood, I don't know how it's gonna accept that. Okay, so we'll get out, this is hedge wood. Um, number 1206, this is the Minwax water-based stain, and it is an amazing product. I love these stains. We put them in the honey bottles. We'll put an affiliate link below. Um, this makes it so much easier. Like every time you open one of these and you pour out of them, it makes it so it won't seal and all of that. The honey bottles makes it really easy for you to play around with your colors. Put out some water-based stain. I think I am gonna get a baggie for my hand. We use the fold top bags from Walmart. Um, 
And these are just awesome. They don't have the zipper closure on them, so they're smooth everywhere. And they make a really good and expensive glove. Um, what I've noticed with these stains is the pigments are very pure. What that means is it can stain your hands and then it's really hard to get off. And since I wanna go to lunch after this, I don't wanna have brown goo all over my hands. Okay, so we'll take a Scott towel, fold it over, and you're gonna see what I see. I'm gonna start in the crevice and see what this does for the surface. Oh, that's warming up nicely. Yeah, I like that. When you're staining, you wanna to try to keep your stains in passes. You wanna go with shape following, and you wanna do, like, so I'm keeping all of the stain inside that circle, because if I start rubbing onto this and then I stain over it, it'll darken in the areas I've already stained. So I wanna be really cautious of that. So I'm kind of wiping it off with the back of my hand as I get any on there. And then I'm cleaning it up as I go around. Okay, now I've been around and now we'll go to the middle. And so we're gonna go with the grain I'm gonna get my board going in the right direction so I can do nice straight lines. I'm using smaller movements than I was using before because I wanna make sure I get a good application. Don't touch it with your fingers like I just did. Hold it from the bottom. Isn't that pretty? These are just elegant colors. Um, I did not think it was possible to achieve this pretty a color with a water-based stain. I thought it had to be oil-based. And Minwax has outdone themselves. Very tickled with these. I want them all. However, there are a lot of them. Okay, so now I'm making a mess around my edge. Okay with that, I'm looking for even. Where did I get? mushy mushy stuff going on. So I'm gonna give it a second coat here. I'm gonna clean up my edge. Fresh stain will take away fresh stain, but if you let it dry, I think that's probably the one disadvantage with water base is it will go fast. Dry fast. Get over here, clean me up. You know, I'm getting pulls. It's, it's not making a texture pull, but I'm getting a lot of tension. So I think what I need to do now is let it dry and then I can decide if I want a second coat on there. And I am gonna go ahead and grab this edge while I'm, while I'm here. All right, so now that it's dry and it feels really good, but you can feel just a little bit of a raised surface. We're gonna bring out our ultra fine sandpaper, which is a paper bag. And we're just going to go over this to knock back any little raised bumpies. Oh yeah, that's so good. Okay, I saw an example. Um, when I am looking for examples of things, I run to Pinterest. I do not Google. Um, Google's a little bit more um, search word, deliver what you've searched for kind of thing. And I tend to want to find pretty things. So I run to Pinterest and search there for just Lazy Susan and let Pinterest show me beautiful Lazy Susans. Um, so that's how I do that. And then I find examples and then decide what I'm gonna paint or stencil or whatever, or sometimes I'll have that idea in my head already. Um, but Pinterest is amazing. Okay, so what you just saw me doing is I have Classic Black. Um, it's a Minwax stain and it is number 1185. And what I like about, I could use my black paint and I could mix it because this is water-based and this is water-based. So I could mix the two of these, but this is an opaque 
color, and this is a sheer color. So with the sheerness of the stain, I'm gonna get a way richer, more, so it's almost like when you can see through something into the other part of it, it makes it a deeper look. That's what I like about using sheer color. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of black in with my brown and hope that I can just strike a good balance. It was about two brown to one black. I don't like it, I can wipe it off. Using a palette knife to mix. Um, normally what I would do if I wasn't doing this, this is gonna be a gift for one of our um, teammates here. Um, but if I was just kind of winging it for me, I might just put my finger into a little bit of black and into a little bit of brown, but I want it to go on evenly. It's uncharacteristically picky of me. Okay, so now we're gonna go right into this little crack right here. And I want to keep it off of the main board. And I just want to bring that eye in to that crack. Yeah. My example had it very dark. So I don't know how far I'm going to go with this. If you find yourself having a lighter color like right over here, that'll be where your cross grain is. So that's why that happens like this will be an end grain. So it will take the paint in. It's almost like stacked up straws. Um, so everywhere where there's an end grain, the paint can go into all your straws and it'll be much darker. And then the side is where the side of your straw is and it doesn't take water in very well. All right, guys, we are dry, and I love how that deep color looks. And now we place our stencil. I'm gonna talk about Studio R12 stencils. Um, we have stencils in all the sizes. We have 6,000 something titles. That means different art for 6,000 plus stencils. I think we're getting close to 7,000. But we have a lot of personalized stencils. And so what happens with personalized if you go in through Studio R12, we have Studio R12 Etsy as well. Um, you can find it a couple of ways, but we personalize it and pre-bridge it for you so that you can reuse it. And I love this especially, I'm the mother of five sons. I love this especially because that means I have five daughter-in-laws and that means we have a lot of Rawlinsons. Okay, so when I order a personalized stencil, that means I can reuse this and make it over and over on different things, do whatever I want with it, but I can make it for gifts. So that makes just the perfect gift. People love their names on things. So we have worked towards making personalized stencils for a really long time and we love this part of our business. So we have a circle of strength and love. The Fletcher family, this is for one of our employees, one of our teammates and um, getting married this year, so fun. Anyway, so we are going to make sure that we're straight. So glasses on and make sure we think this line is a little bit diagonally and I think this is my straight line. So I want my, my compass to be level on the horizontal. And now I'm going to use like basically, um, Steve called it finger uh, measuring and I'm going to play around with this being straight. I think we got it lined up. I'm gonna take a peeky poo. I'm gonna hold it down here. Do I feel like I'm still straight? I do feel like I'm still straight. Okay. And then we're going to tape in two spots. So I'm gonna find two of the spots that are going off the edges and then my stencil won't budge, okay? So we're gonna take our black paint, which is number 28. And we do have color chip charts for our paints. We use deco art paints to do craft projects with, but when we are doing um, big things like our filming and all of that, we use the Sherwin-Williams paints that were converted from the deco art paints or matched as closely as possible. And we do have a color chip chart that corresponds. We have given these our own numbers 
but we have translated them for you and given them their product numbers so that you can actually go look for your deco art, deco art bottle number and your Sherwin Williams, as well as computer hex codes. So this is a really invaluable tool. And since about a few months ago, we have been making sure to let you know what colors we're using. So if you want exactly the color, then you'll know what to, where to look. And it's nice because it's a limited palette. Um, we tried to choose wisely so we didn't have to have 300 colors. Okay, so we've got our black paint, number 28. We're gonna take a dry dome brush and a dry paper towel, and we'll do about 10 little swirls, little off, looks kind of like this, and we just wanna scumble off that top layer of paint. Okay, and we're gonna do that every time we load the paint, so don't forget to offload every time. And now we're just gonna do a nice swirl over and over and over again. So we are going to paint this stencil and I'm not hurrying, I'm do relax. I'm doing layers, nice little light layers. And then we will tell you what time it is when we get done. See how long it takes. Stenciling is so fast and so forgiving. Like I can look at you in the camera. If I would not um, forget what I was supposed to be doing, I move my hands and my mouth at the same time. But um, it is so fast, so forgiving, and so amazing. Um, I love it. And I cannot tell you how many tears I've run across when people were like, you're going to have to trace the, um, the letters and then base them and then keep them perfect. Ugh, it scares people. So we're going to work from the top down. So I'll move, since I got all the way down to the side here, I'll move here. And then if you feel unsure, you can lift and peek and that looks like it's doing a perfect job. So just nice light layers. You're not gonna move your stencil unless it's to peek underneath. If this is a slicker surface, so if you're on something that is a little bit like finer, like a base coat of paint is a rougher surface, um, you wanna make sure you definitely offload for the first layer because it can tend to like concentrate at the edges of the stencil. So just super light, and then it'll have a base of paint. Okay, so we've got the first layer on. We can take a little peeky poo. Looks absolutely perfect, and we are at 3.10, three minutes and 10 seconds to get all the way through one coat. So I'm gonna hit the blow dryer for just a hot second. And a lot of times that blow dryer will catch the edges of the stencil and it makes it so the stencil doesn't stick to the paint. That's kind of a really cool thing. Now we're gonna go again with round two. And you can see, let's look at this right here. You can see that's already so much darker than the other letters. So it quickly builds up. Two or three coats should be all that you need. All right, we are at seven minutes and 26 seconds, and that is what we look like. And I do think we need one more coat, so I will blow dry one more time, and then we will give it one more coat. I just saw this with these leaves down here. Um, such When you have a good amount of stenciling, you notice more things that you do. Um, I noticed that there was an area when I stipple, when I swirl this direction, so counterclockwise, um, that there was a blank area. I've got one over here as well, um, a couple of places. So I reversed my swirling and it took care and filled that area. So that's a really good thing. One time go through clockwise, one time go through counterclockwise, vice versa, and then you will make sure to cover the edges of all the things. Okay, we are at 12 minutes and 36 seconds, and now let's take a peek. Okay, so we always peek before we decide. So that is nice, strong black. I'm gonna call it, look at my stencil. Yeah, you're good. Um, look at that, isn't that amazing? So that looks so ding dang good. Okay, next we're going to blow dry. Um, isn't that amazing to make a perfectly personalized gift in minutes. Um, we were talking while I was doing all the swirling um, that um, if you had to trace and base this, 
um, that you would be at it for probably hours. Um, and it would take a high degree of skills, um, tools, like a very good expensive brush, that kind of thing. So to be able to do that, I've done it for years, so I know exactly what it takes. Um, and then taught it and made people cry because it's like, no, there's all the words. So um, just know that this is just such a time savings. And then if you had to weed um, a vinyl stencil and tragically, a friend of mine went to a workshop with me um, and she misplaced her vinyl stencil and did it a little bit cockeyed and she was unable to fix that. Um, so she had to get a whole nother vinyl stencil she had to weed the whole nother vinyl stencil. She had to sand off base coat, do all the things. Stencils are repositionable, they're reusable, and they're precision laser cut. So they are a very amazing thing. Okay, so next we're going to blow dry. Okay, and as I was running my hand over this, I can feel where the stencil raised up just a little bit. So we're gonna take out the very expensive Kroger bag and we are going to give it a light sand over those letterings. That's gonna make everybody kind of sink into the background. It's the best sandpaper technique you'll ever know about. I don't wanna sand through anything. I don't wanna make texture. I just want the bumpies going. Yeah. Okay, so now I ask myself, what do I need next? And I do think that I want some spatters. So we're going to, um, spatters tend to fill in an area and tend to make it just, um, just fuller, more finished kind of. Okay, so I'm going to get water on my white Wonder Brush and I'm going to thin out to the consistency of cream or milk my black paint, and then I'll take a heavy handled brush, and that's not heavy enough. Though so I want something with some weight. This has got a kind of bamboo-y um, handle. So we're going to test over here, always pop off the big guys, and now we're going to kind of snow around. Pick up a little bit more water, splash it off, offload. There's a theme today, offload your brushes. Okay, and then we'll get in the middle. Battering is quite an artistic event. I think we'll go around the outer edge. Everything on your surface, your painting table, will be wet when you get done. So know that you are gonna have a mess. So we're gonna pick this up, slide it away and go in with a paper towel so that we don't have wet paint. Spatter dots stay wet for a really long time. All right, I wanna do one more step with um, doing a little bit of antiquing around the edge with the black only. I think it needs just a little bit more deepening. I'm going to get my black stain and just a titch touch of the brown to break it down just a little bit. All right, and then I want to soften any hard angles on my paper towel. I kind of want to do the shoe shine hold. Okay, the shoe shine hold means that you take a t-shirt and you soften it around your fingers, and then that's the soft rounded area that you're gonna use to do the antiquing or the shoe shining. So I don't want to bring it in that crack. I want to bring it just around that edge. Offloading, feathering. Yeah, I like that deeper on this side than I do on the other. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do this on the outer edge. Okay, and now we let it dry. So I have Clapham's Salad Bowl Wax that I'm going to do this um, Lazy Susan with. You could use regular wax, but if you want it food safe, this is what you're gonna use. Beeswax is an amazingly hard sealer for surfaces. So I'll do two coats of the beeswax, and then you can refresh that um, as used. So if you don't use the thing very much, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you have a salad bowl that you use on a monthly, weekly, whatever basis, then you would just reapply every couple months, once a year, that kind of thing. So we're gonna use the Scott paper towel because it's lint-free. I'm gonna dig out a little wad of the stuff and we're gonna start in the middle. This is gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna darken up that stain color just a little bit and it's going to make this surface feel amazing. Okay, we're gonna apply this to the edges as well and into this little crack. Um, then we're gonna let it dry for about an hour and then we're gonna buff it. Um, so you wanna definitely give it a little bit of curing time and then when you buff it, it's gonna be beautiful and then you'll apply your second coat. All right, I've let this dry for an hour or so and it is ready to buff. So I'm just going to do little slooping circles. If anything is a little bit wet, just buff it out and then you can apply a second coat. And you kind of apply the second coat to make sure that you've covered all the areas because anything unwaxed will grab onto anything that's um, that it comes in contact with. So you just wanna make sure You've covered it, so if I wiped this way the first time, I'll wipe this way the second time, and then I always buff in a circle. Okay, we did it, it's so beautiful. You guys, I love breathing new life into an old find. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give us a thumbs up and subscribe and ring the bell if you wanna hear from us in the future for more DIY projects.